Hi everyone, I'm Jenna Fink for Galvanize and I'm joined by Kate Scott as part of our Who Not Do series. Kate, thank you for taking the time. Of course, Jenna, thanks for having me. We all know you do some pretty amazing things in front of the camera, a play-by-play -play broadcaster, host and reporter for the Pac-12 Network and also a broadcaster for NBC. But today we're gonna get to know a little bit more about who you are. And let's start with COVID-19 because it's seemingly all anyone talks about uh, <laughs> right now. It's thrown a wrench in everything and left us with way too much free time. I know for me, I've struggled to find purpose during these last few months, going from being a busy college student to sitting around in my childhood home. Did you struggle to find your purpose at all? Uh, yeah, actually, I think I'm one of the very few lucky ones um, because when COVID hit, I was actually at the Pac-12 men's basketball tournament in Las Vegas when we got the call, right? That the NBA was shuttering their season for the time being. But I was lucky enough to have another gig. So I was hosting a three day a week podcast for The Athletic called The Update out here in the Bay Area. So that kept me busy uh, through the middle of July, uh, which is when that came to an end. My contract with them ran out. So it's actually only been, it's gonna be, I guess, almost a month now um, that I am just settling into to not having something to do every single day. And to be totally honest, um, it's actually been really wonderful. This is the first time I've actually had to pause and breathe and um, just kind of get to reflect, which we so rarely have the chance to just pause these days. You've been married to your wife, Nicole, for 12 years. You're one of the few out women in sports media and you speak very openly about it. And we see that result now, but was it difficult for you to get to that point? Yeah, it was. Um, I think, like anything, it, it's been a growth process. Um, you know, I came out uh, my junior year at Cal 2004, which I know in years maybe doesn't sound that long ago, but in gay years, as I like to call them, it's kind of light years from where we are now as a society when it comes to acceptance of the LGBTQ plus community. I distinctly remember when I came out to my parents on my 21st birthday here in the Bay Area, uh, my mom started crying when I told her that I was gay. And uh, it was unexpected because I, I knew that she would be supportive. I wasn't sure about my dad. He is, I'm so lucky to have two supportive parents. Um, but she said, Kate, gosh, you know, you've done so many internships already. You're getting ready to be a woman going into sports broadcasting, which is already a layer of difficulty that you're gonna face. And now you're going to add being gay to that? How, what do you, I'm just so worried that this dream that you have, that you've already worked so hard to get your foot in the door when you graduate, that it, it might just be impossible because of all these challenges you're throwing up in front of yourself. And I just vividly remember that moment because I thought to myself after we went our separate ways that day, if I ever get to a point in my career where I'm making a name for myself, um, and I'm pretty safe career-wise, um, that I can be out so that no kid or parent has to have a conversation like that. But it's been a growth process to, to answer your question. It took me a number of years into my career to get comfortable. Um, and I think all of my layers of privilege have helped with that as well. The fact that Nicole and I, as you mentioned, have been together forever. I think having a supportive um, spouse that I'm really proud of has helped, right? I'm so proud of her and that's why I talk so openly about our relationship to have that. All of our parents are supportive. That is a layer of privilege that a lot of people still in our community don't have. I'm white, so that's another layer of privilege. And I know so many people who don't have one layer of that privilege, let alone all of them that I do. You mentioned being comfortable in your work and years after coming out to your own family, you came out on the air at KMBR. How and why did that happen? Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Um, but as anybody who's come out in any way, shape or form knows, there is never a good time. You can plan and you can, you know, down to a T, this is what I'm going to say, this is how we're going to do it. And then uh, as it happened with me, one of my co-hosts, uh, we were a simulcast at the time, so a radio show, but also one that was broadcast on television. So I'm motioning like this, and of course, I don't even have my ring on today. Bad spouse. Um, <laughs> I'm motioning, talking about sports, and he looks at me and goes, 
hey, Kate, this is like a week after I'm on KNBR, first woman they've hired full time, 20 years younger than all my co-hosts. Again, so many layers of things that they were not used to in the typically straight male version of radio. Um, and he sees, somehow sees my wedding ring as I'm talking. Hey, Kate, Kate, what's your husband? Think about the fact that he has a wife who knows so much about sports. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and, right? Like my mind is exploding. Uh, uh, <laughs> half a second of dead air and radio feels like an hour and a half. Of course. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is not at all how I planned. I planned to tell them off air so that they could, if they wanted to talk about it, again, it was their show, they could. I was just a sports anchor at that time. And again, I think because of all the things we just talked about, I realized, okay, I've been in this industry enough years now. Everybody behind the scenes who I've worked with so far knows that I'm gay. I, I told myself all those years ago that if I got an opportunity to have a platform like this, I would come out. So here goes nothing. And on live radio, I said, you know, Gary, actually, I'm married to a woman. This is live radio. And then... The dead air was on his end and nobody ever shut him up. Uh, love you, Gary. And uh, then he said, oh, uh, uh, that, what, uh, uh, Kate, that's, that's awesome. What, what, what does she think? You know, to his credit, he did a great job responding. We go to break and both of us are like, what just happened? I go into his studio because we were in different studios and we talked it out. But in retrospect, it was so honest and real, right? And that makes the best radio. And so many people, even six years after the fact, came up and said to me when we were at, you know, broadcasting live before a Giants game or 49ers game or whatever, and just said that was so honest and so real. And to get to be a fly on a wall to hear someone coming out was so helpful to me. Um, so thank you for living your, your truth and being open about it. So you know what? <laughs> if you can do, right? That's what we're talking about right now. The who, um, not the do. But, um, but yeah, so that was a crazy time, no doubt. Yeah, that's a crazy story. I mean, <laughs> wow. Still kind of nervous talking about it again. <laughs> there in that moment. Oh my gosh, what do I say? Definitely. Um, over the last few months, there's been an outpouring of support for the Black Lives Matter movement. And as someone who is Jewish, I've seen this through the lens, someone who's experienced anti-Semitism growing up. I know you're also Jewish and obviously both groups face very different struggles, but how have your experiences as a gay Jewish woman framed the way you look at the current social justice issues? Yeah, um, I mean, it's had a, a massive impact on how I'm seeing everything, right? Um, you maybe can see the shirt I'm wearing today uh, underneath the hair that hasn't been cut since COVID started. It's been way too <laughs> I would hope that I would be where I am right now and feel that I want to continue to learn and grow and understand my black friends and coworkers and their experiences to the best of my ability if I hadn't experienced any of the discrimination I have over the years because I'm gay, because I'm a woman, because I'm Jewish. But all I know is that I have those experiences and they have 100% impacted where I am and how I feel about this current movement, because I, you know, I'm sure you can relate, Jenna. Once you are discriminated against, once in your life for whatever it is, color your hair, the shoes you're wearing, that has an impact on you, and you don't forget it. Um, so to have experienced as much discrimination as I have, know it's completely different. Cannot relate at all because I can hide my difference. A lot of times, right? I, I think a lot of people, if they just tuned into this right now, would say, oh, there's a straight white woman who works in broadcasting. They wouldn't know that I'm gay or Jewish. Or, so I can hide my differences where I know that my black friends and coworkers can't. And I, you know, like a lot of white people, wish I would have been doing what I'm doing now with the tweets and the learning and everything. I'm ashamed and embarrassed that I hadn't been doing this before, but I've learned already over the last couple months, that's not gonna get us anywhere. We need to turn that around and just put it into energy and inspiration to learn and, and then to act and support, um, you know, again, our black brothers and sisters and friends and coworkers and followers and everybody that we can, that we care about um, to, to listen to them and help in whatever way we can that they say that they need us. Definitely. And you were the first female Mike man at UC Berkeley, first woman to call an NFL game on the radio, first part of the first all female NHL broadcast. So it's safe to say you'll be remembered as a pioneer in your career, but all that's your due, and I'm not really supposed to be talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you want your who to be recognized? 
Hmm. I think I'm still figuring that out. Yeah, because it is funny hearing all those things because I know that I know how important they are. I know how important they have been in my career, in getting my name out there and helping me get future jobs and, and um, get recognized to the level that I am right now in broadcasting. Um, but I was really excited and also really nervous to, to talk to you today, Jenna, because this is, this is what I want to be remembered for, as somebody who was willing to take a stand, maybe willing to have uncomfortable conversations, uh, maybe willing to put themselves out there when other people weren't, and, uh, I, and continuing to grow. Well, Kate, it's been such a pleasure getting to know more about who you are. Thank you so much for taking the time. Well, this was fantastic, Jenna. Thanks so much.